an eternal perspective. When we see wicked people flourishing, we are not to become frustrated and angry, realizing that God will ultimately reward us for our faithfulness, if not on this present earth, then in eternity. Here now is Gene Getz. I think one of the most frustrating things that we face as Christians, and I've seen this over the years, I've seen it in my own experience, is when we see wicked people flourishing and some of the most godly people suffering. That is a tough, that's a tough situation. And it's hard not to be frustrated. And it's hard not to be angry. Uh, it happens in various ways. You see people who are absolutely unethical flourishing financially. And you see Christians who are absolutely ethical and honest and hardworking and doing what is good and suffering. How do you explain that? Well, we can't ultimately. We have to entrust God with that. But David dealt with that, and he, he speaks to that by giving us words of exhortation and encouragement, and those two words are very closely related. Exhortation and encouragement. This is what he says. Do not be agitated by evildoers. Do not envy those who do wrong. For they wither quickly like grass and wilt like tender green plants. Trust in the Lord and do what is good. Dwell in the land and live securely. In essence, what he is saying here is we've got to just trust in God in these situations. I thought of Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, which I paraphrase, you know, trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean on your own understanding. All your ways acknowledge Him and He will indeed direct your paths. And this is a walk of faith even though we don't understand some of the evil that is in this world. Now, another thing I think we need to keep in mind as we read this psalm particularly, and as we read the whole biblical story, is that God measures time very differently than we do. And even, in some respects, the way David measured time. In fact, in the New Testament, promises are often eternal rather than related to this life. There are promises that relate to this life, but also there are promises many, many times and throughout the New Testament that are focused on the eternal, not on this earth. The Old Testament frequently uh, focused on the promises on this earth. And David is obviously thinking about this. And as we'll see in the New Testament, the focus, as I said, is often eternal. So uh, let's take a look at the exhortations and promises that we find right here. And as we do, think not just present, but think eternal. Take delight in the Lord, and He will give you your heart's desire. And you know something? If not now, eternally. Eternally. Psalm 37, 5 and 6, Commit your way to the Lord, trust in Him, and He will act, making your righteousness shine like the dawn, your justice like the noonday. If not now, eternally. We will be incredibly honored someday eternally for the way we have lived our lives here on this earth. All we need to do is read the end of the book of Revelation. Psalm 37, verse 7. Be silent before the Lord and wait expectantly for Him. That's something we can apply every day. And the New Testament Christians who were persecuted, one of the great hopes that they had was waiting expectantly for the coming of Jesus to deliver them from this earth. Psalm 37, 8. Refrain from anger and give up your rage. Do not be agitated. It can only bring harm. And all of us can identify with that. That certainly is not the way God wants us to live. Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. At some point in time or in eternity, God will make everything right. Now, here in Psalm 37, 11, uh, we see David's words compared uh, to Jesus. But the humble will inherit the land 
and will enjoy abundant prosperity. But notice what Jesus said in the Beatitudes, and He, I think, is reinterpreting or expanding on this concept from the psalm. When He says, on the mountain, there He was teaching, Matthew 5, 5, the gentle are blessed, or the humble, for they will inherit the earth. And some think, think that the choice here, of the word earth is very significant because there is coming a day when all true believers will reign with Jesus Christ on this earth when He returns. And I personally believe that there will be indeed a thousand year reign of Christ after He comes and that we will reign with Him as believers after we are taken out of this world, receive our new bodies. And the Bible talks about that. And Jesus could have been referring to this. But also, in all of these promises, there is an ultimate fulfillment that is defined so beautifully at the end of the book of Revelation. And that is that we, all of us who are true believers in Christ, will be rewarded in extraordinary ways when God creates a new heaven and a new earth and we will dwell with Jesus Christ eternally. So when you read these statements from the Old Testament, remember to think in terms of David's perspective, in terms of the Abrahamic promise. And someday God will give the land, I believe. He'll fulfill the land promise to His people. Literally, that will be fulfilled. And it will be fulfilled after Jesus Christ comes, I personally believe. But in the process, Jesus is looking to a far greater perspective when He talks about the way in which we will be honored as we work and serve Him because of our faithfulness to Him. So the whole biblical picture helps us, I think, to understand uh, this concept. So here is a reflection and response question. As you reflect on the rest of this psalm, and we've just looked briefly at, at the psalm, not at the whole psalm. As you reflect on the rest of this psalm, what does David say will eventually happen to those who consistently reject God and live evil lives? If you read through the rest of the psalm, you will find that David used the word wicked at least 15 times in the rest of the psalm. And what will happen to the wicked? It is not a pretty picture because of God's judgment ultimately on sin. For example, Psalm 37, verses 35 and 36. I have seen a wicked, violent man well-rooted like a flourishing native tree. Then I passed by and noticed he was gone. I searched for him, but he could not be found. And that, of course, can happen in the here and now, but it will definitely happen in eternity. It will definitely happen in eternity. So here's the principle to live by. When we see wicked people flourishing, we're not to become frustrated and angry realizing that God will ultimately reward us for our faithfulness, if not on this present earth, then in eternity.